Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how to fake depth of field in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flirt. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. We've got something awesome for you today. I'm gonna to show you guys how to fake depth of field in Photoshop. Now this means if you guys were shooting with a relatively high aperture like a f8 or f11, I'm gonna show you guys how to get it to look like it was shot maybe at f2.8, f2, 1.4, and uh, you can do this in Photoshop. Now it's not an incredibly easy technique and you have to kind of be a little bit precise about it and it depends on your image. If you have something that's a little bit more vague, like kind of what we're gonna be doing today, it'll be a little easier. If you're trying to cut someone out of the background and make their background a little bit, uh, the background less sharp, it's gonna be the same technique, it's just gonna be a little bit harder. Maybe you could use the pen tool to cut them out. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. We got a lot to do and it's it's really gonna be cool. Okay, so we have our image today and this is from someone in the family. I apologize because I cannot pronounce your name, but amazing image. And what we're gonna be doing is basically showing you guys how to make this image look like it has a relatively shallow depth of field. Now, when I was looking at the image, I was just noticing a couple things. Let's create a new layer and uh, bring this all the way to the top here. A couple things I was noticing were like the sharp line that kind of dictated uh, right up here along our subject's head. And I'm not sure if this person was cut out of their background or not. Um, if they were, maybe the uh, sharpness is just, maybe it's just a little bit too sharp up there. And I thought because it's such an intimate portrait and it does look really, really great, uh, it'd be a really good candidate for using a shallow depth of field. And you can do it in Photoshop. Now, keep in mind guys, this is always, always, always gonna be better if you do it in camera. This is not a substitute for doing it in camera. It's just a cool technique and you can use it and it's going to uh, kind of like fake that technique. But we're, uh, we're always recommending that you do it in camera if you can. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we need to build what's called a depth map. And a depth map is basically the idea that uh, as, as something is uh, closer or farther away from the camera, it's gonna be varying degrees of light or dark. If you guys have any history using like a 3D modeling program, for instance, you can create depth maps out of those. Today, we're gonna be creating a very rough, rough depth map, and it's gonna be still really cool, but we're gonna be basically doing with the lasso tool. So the closest elements to the camera those should be the lightest elements and the furthest away elements, those should be the darkest elements. And then you can stack those on each other and then use that as a depth map to define what's going to actually get a blur in a special blur technique. So we'll show you that. So we're gonna just start off with the closest elements towards the camera. And here's what we're doing. We're gonna use a lasso tool and I'm just gonna select out what I feel is pretty close to the camera. So we'll start off with areas like his eyebrows. Now, I'm just using a regular lasso tool. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and this is gonna allow us to add to these selections. There we go, something like that. These areas are nice and close to the camera. We'll get his nose as well, which is, again, nice and close. Maybe a little bit of here, right, his eyelids, and here with his cheekbones as well. There we are. Let's go ahead and make sure his forehead is selected in our depth map. I selected this a little bit too much. If you do something you don't want selected, just hold down the Alt or the Option key and then you can kind of uh, take that area away from your selection. Okay, and let's just bring that up like this. This doesn't have to be incredibly accurate. We're gonna wind up putting a blur on it in just a little bit. Let's get his mustache here. Very cool macho mustache. A little bit of bottom there. And there we are. Something like that. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna fill this with white. So I'm on a new layer. I'm gonna hit Shift Delete and we're gonna say use white. There we are, and this is just so I can see what I'm actually doing. Let's hit Command D to deselect, and now I wanna hit uh, the V key, and then we're gonna hit the number five. So this is, V is the move tool, and then if you're on the move tool, one through 10 on your keyboard is going to change the opacity of your layer. Or you can just go over here and change your opacity to 50%. So this is everything that's the closest to the camera. Now what we're gonna be doing, let's create another layer, and we're gonna just basically do the same thing. We're gonna be doing this a few times. So this is the second layer. This is like a little bit farther away from the camera. There we go. And this area is a little bit farther from the camera. Still, you know, still included. There we are. Let's make sure we include all of his nose this time. And you just kind of have to think about this. Like, okay, is it it's a little bit further back now? Uh, that's, you know, that's what's gonna get selected now. Let's go ahead and select out along this area. And you should notice that the second layer you do this on, 
should grow from the first one. In other words, it should be larger than the first one. There we are. And that looks pretty good. So the first one's gonna be just inclusive of, you know, just the areas that are close to the camera and then they go back and back and back. We're gonna do this in like maybe four slices or so. We're gonna hit shift delete and I'm gonna say fill that with white. And now we're gonna hit, we're just gonna lower the opacity again. So what we're seeing now, although I'm lowering the opacity on each of these, we're seeing a stacking technique where this is not really that visible, but this one, it's doubling. And that's, that's what we want with this stacking technique. We want this to be more and more visible the closer it comes to the camera. So let's create another one of these. And this will be fun. If you, guys, if you guys like this technique, you can do it with any one of your images and create that like kind of false depth of field. There we go. This time we're gonna get uh, basically his entire face all the way up to right about there. We're gonna hit shift delete, fill that with white, and then we're gonna change the opacity to about 50% on this one as well. Let's do it again here on a new layer. And this time we're basically including all of our, all of our man. So each time you want it to be completely inclusive of everything beneath it. There we are, everything beneath it. So this time we're gonna include his head as well as his shoulders. And let's just bring that up here, all the way over the top of his head. There we are. So now we're gonna hit shift delete again, fill it with white. Let's bring that opacity down to about 50%. So this is basically our depth map now. We can turn our background image off, well, if I just create a new layer and I fill this with black, you can see it kind of looks like our portrait, right? Which is uh, scary and really cool. Let's just bring the opacity of this one up a little bit. You can kind of push and pull these by changing your opacity to kind of decide, you know, how, how light or how dark you want something to go. There we go. Let's pull this back as well. So we now have a little bit more of a uh, contrasted portrait here. Okay, so what do we do with this now? Now that we created this interesting uh, piece of art here, what do we actually do with it? Well, we can get rid of this black layer. I was just putting that in there to show you guys. I'm gonna hold down shift and click on all these layers, and then I'm gonna hit command E, which is gonna merge them together. So command E is gonna merge all these layers together. So I've just got these, this layer now, and it's on its own. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hold down the control of the command key and click on this layer, and it's gonna turn it into a selection. So everything on this layer is now a selection. Okay, so that being a selection, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back here into my channels. I've already done this a couple of times, so let me just delete these other couple of channels here. There we go, you guys won't have to do this. So we have our selection, so I hit Command and click on this layer. Now we're gonna go back to our channels, I'm gonna hit the new channel icon, okay? So we still have our selection here with the new channel. Now it's a dark channel and I wanna put light all over top of this. So I'm gonna hit Command I and that's gonna invert just that area on our channel. Okay, then we're gonna hit the Command D to deselect. So I'll just go over that real quick so you guys can uh, make sure you stay with me because it, it's a lot to go over. So we started out with our back background image. We created a bunch of layers over top and kind of like built that depth in. Then we merged those all together. Then we hold down Control or Command to select that out. And with that selected, then we go to our channels, create a new channel and invert that on our channel. So our channel should now look basically exactly like what we would have had before. Now, channels are a great way to make selections. They're also a way to do some advanced, uh, ad advanced techniques in Photoshop. So this is more of the advanced uh, technique <laughs> side of things. What we're gonna be doing now is it's a little bit too well-defined. So I wanna add a blur to this layer. So what we're, we're gonna do is go to filter, blur, and then down to Gaussian blur. There we are. And we can see it, I mean, it really does look like a portrait. That's, that's the idea. If yours looks nothing like a, a person or whatever you're cutting out, then uh, by all means, try it again. There we are, we're gonna hit okay. And now we have this nice blur and this is a depth map. So this is like, you know, the lighter things are closer to the camera, the darker things are farther away from the camera. So now we have this selected, what do we do now? Well, we're gonna go ahead and leave this there. We're gonna be accessing this in a minute. We're gonna leave it there. And on my background layer, I'm gonna hit command J and that's gonna create a duplicate of the background layer. So we have our background, the background copy and this guy, which for all intents and purposes, we don't really need them anymore. So now what we're gonna do, here's the trick. Here's where we're gonna bring it all together. We're gonna to be using a special blur called lens blur, and that's going to allow us to create that depth, to put the depth map in and apply it to this image. So let's click on our layer. We'll go to filter, down here to blur, and over here to lens blur. Now the lens blur is a really cool, uh, it's a really cool blur. Obviously it, it lets you basically 
intimidate, not intimidate, that's just not the word at all. <laughs> imitate, there we go. It lets you imitate what a lens would actually do. So you can see as I, as I kind of bring up my blur here, let's just make sure I'm, I'm deselected. Let's go to filter. Oh, if you are selected, it'll, it'll, make, it'll just blend in the area that you've selected. So make sure, you're, make sure you're not. So as I bring up my radius here, you can see it actually does do a relatively good job looking like the actual blur of a, of a lens. What we're gonna do, let's go ahead and bring our radius down uh, to about 10 or 11. This is just for the test. Now, what we're gonna see is a couple options here. The preview is basically gonna show you whether or not you're gonna do it. I would recommend keeping that checked. We have a faster option and a more accurate option. I'd recommend keeping the more accurate option checked. Here we have our depth map and our source. Depth map, we've been talking about that a couple times. What we're gonna do for our source, this is where all the magic happens. We're gonna click here and I'm gonna choose alpha one, which is what we just created, right? Let's go ahead and bring our radius up and you can see what we've got going on. Now, you might look at this and say, well, that's kind of cool, but it's the exact, it's, it's opposite. It looks really weird. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hit this invert button and that's gonna invert the lights and the darks. And now what we have is a depth map that we built and that's being used to define the blur on this layer. And the better job you do creating that depth map, the better job this is, the better this is going to look. Now, I wouldn't recommend going crazy with it because it's just going to look, well, pretty bad. But keeping your blur, you know, anywhere in the area, you know, under 20, I would say is a pretty reliable way to use this technique. Let's just see how far I can push this and have it still look relatively good. Yeah, I would say in this case, I'm gonna keep it to about 13. You can change things like your blade curvature. Uh, you can change things like the shape of the iris. This is basically imitating the aperture and you can go from a hexagon to an octagon, really whatever you want. I would also recommend adding some noise. I would hit Gaussian and click on monochromatic. It's just gonna add some black and white noise. And depending on how much noise you have in your image, um, you wanna bring this up. So in this case, I'm just gonna bring our noise up to one. And that's gonna make it just look a little bit more natural. Let's bring our noise up to two. There we go. It's gonna make the blur effect look just a bit more natural. So you can see here that the areas that are lighter in the depth map are not as blurred now. It's a little bit more in focus in the areas like his forehead and his eyebrows and his cheeks and it gets more, continually more and more out of focus as it goes backwards. Let's hit okay, and this is what we've got, guys. Very, very cool. So a lot of work to get here, but we can see it just kind of does exactly what we wanted it to. The closer areas don't get the blur, and the farther areas, the farther they go back, get blurred and blurred and blurred. So from this to this to <laughs> this, Using those depth map in an area basically going from light where the things are closest to the camera all the way back through dark and we can build depth into the blur and what you don't want to do make sure you don't if it's too much of a blur you want to redo the blur don't lower your opacity because what you're going to get let's just zoom in here you'll get these areas that's like it's going to be really fuzzy looking right because you've got some blur and some sharp it's really just kind of like weird and fuzzy make sure see that's a little bit well, it's a, it's a lot better, really. So make sure you do include that um, you don't want it to have lower your opacity. Just do the blur again, and you'll be good to go. Now, it's not perfect. I mean, here on the edges, it should be just a tiny bit more blurred, in my opinion, of, you know, just this area and things like that. So what you could do is you could run a slight Gaussian blur over the top of it, like just very, very small, and this will probably just help out that situation. There we go. And there we have something that looks a lot more natural. And overall, just a really cool technique. Not incredibly hard to do, but um, adds a lot of depth, literally, to your image. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flirt. I hope you enjoyed this technique. If you use this on one of your images, I would love to see it. Please leave it in a comment down below. Thanks again, guys, and I'll Flirt you later. Bye, everyone. There's some serious depth going on in this tutorial.